think I'm going to bring you together. Um, just fantastic amount of um, insights and discoveries being made in this room. Um, it breaks my heart to stop you working. Um, the, I, I don't sort of want to give away too much because I'm hoping that some of you will want to go back home and sort of carry on playing around with, with these ideas. And, and, uh, and there is so much to discover. Um, some of you perhaps aren't used to interpreting the algebraic representations. So um, I think if you were working on six consecutive numbers, um, and you express the six consecutive numbers as a, a plus 1, a plus 2, a plus 3, a plus 4, and a plus 5, and then you imagined adding all six consecutive numbers, then I think you would get 6a plus 15. And it might not be completely obvious what that kind of number is. So there are two things about it. One is that it tells you it must be an odd number because all multiples of 6 are even. So if you add an odd number, you're going to get an odd total. But of course, it's not every odd number. So one thing you can do here is say, well, look, I know that's a multiple of 6. And if I add another 6, I will get another multiple of 6. Can I add another 6? Yeah, I've got 15, so I'm all right. So I've got 6a plus 6 plus 6 plus 3. So I can split the 15 up into groups of 6, something left over. And then I can say to myself, all that there is a multiple of 6. And then I've got to add 3. So that was very similar to the multiples of 4, where we had multiple of 4 plus 2. For, for six consecutive numbers, we get multiples of 6 plus 3. OK. Um, some of you, somebody came up to me and said that you thought that powers of 2, so 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, cannot be written as a sum of consecutive numbers. Um, now, this seems quite difficult to prove, because these, these go on forever. There are an infinite number of these. And how are we going to prove that this can't be done, can't ever be done, with either 2 or 3 or 4 or 5? or, you know, 17 consecutive numbers, or 162 consecutive numbers. Seems like a really difficult thing to prove. So let's think about, first of all, what's special about these numbers uh, as compared to sort of all other numbers. If I take a number like 16, say, all the factors of 16 are even. So 16 is made up. Um, and they're even because if I express 16 as the product of its prime factors, then 2 times 2 times 2. There are no odd factors that contribute to building up 16. Whereas with all other numbers, you get at least one odd factor. So if we take 30, for example, 30 is made up from 2 times 15, and 15 is 3 times 5. So it's got some odd factors. If I take... Um, 40, that's 2 times 2 um, times 2 times 5. Any number which is not on this list 
is going to have some odd factors. So instead of proving that these can't be done, what I want to do is prove to you that whenever I add consecutive numbers, I'm always going to get a number from here, a number that's got odd factors, or at least one odd factor. OK, so I'll just repeat that again. We think this is impossible to do, and I'm going to prove that by showing you that whenever I describe a number, uh, whenever I can split a number into consecutive numbers, I'm always going to get a total which has got an odd factor. OK, so here goes. Let's imagine that we've got consecutive numbers. And we're going to carry on. Yep. So I'm not going to decide how big my first number is at this stage. I'm not going to decide how many. So this could just be five or six consecutive numbers, but it could be 106 consecutive numbers. This could be a small number, or it could be in the thousands. Now what happens, how can I add these numbers? Well, one thing I can do is I can take this and revert, turn it upside down and like a jigsaw, fit it in See if I can get these to be more or less. So that maybe it needs to be a bit longer. So this bit of the bar ends up here. That bit ends up there. That bit ends up there. This one ends up there. So this seems quite a nice, clever way of adding lots of consecutive numbers. Because all I need to do now is work out the area of this rectangle. And then I need to halve it, because I only want half the area of the rectangle. So my yellow numbers make up half the rectangle. The whole rectangle gives me the sum of the yellow. OK, so what could my first number have been? Well, let's imagine it was an even number. And let's imagine this was an even number. What does that tell me about how many rows I have? So numbers go even, odd, even, odd, even, odd, even, odd. And I'm finishing with even. Yep. There are going to be an odd number of rows. If this is even, then this must be even. If this is even, then this must be even. So the width of the rectangle is even. I said I only wanted the area of half the rectangle. So I'm going to be able to split the rectangle in the middle. Once I've worked out the area of the rectangle, I can cut it in half. Half the rectangle is the sum, is the sum of my consecutive numbers. But half my rectangle is the width times an odd number. So that total must 
have an odd factor. OK? Well, but what, what if we didn't start with an even number and finish with an even number? What if we started with even and finished odd? So if this is odd, this would have to be odd. Um, would this still be odd? So now, OK, um, we want to work out the area of half this rectangle. So this is even, so half the rectangle, I can just imagine splitting this way this time. And I'm going to get the area of the top half. What can you tell me about the width of the top half? Even plus odd is going to be an odd width. So the area of the top rectangle will be a number which has got an odd factor. So perhaps we shouldn't start with even. There's, that's where our mistake was. Perhaps, why don't we start with odd and finish with odd? Start with odd and finish with odd. What can you tell me about the width of that? Is it going to be even or odd? That's going to be even. Yes? Odd number plus odd number gives us an even total. Um, what happens here? How many rows am I going to have? If I start odd, I go odd even, odd even, odd even, odd even, and an odd. So that's going to be odd. So now, the area of the whole rectangle can be halved by cutting it here. Half the area of the rectangle represents my, sum of, my number that I'm representing by my consecutive numbers. And this has got, gives me a rectangle with an odd height. So it must have an odd factor. So the only thing that we haven't tried is starting odd, finishing even. Odd, finishing even. Um, if I start odd, finish even, odd plus even, you can see what's going to happen. I can split the whole rectangle in half this way because I've got an even total, an even height, but the width of what's left has got, is an odd number. And so it's going to have an odd factor. So whenever I add consecutive numbers, I always end up with a total that has at least one odd factor. That is why I can never end up with a number here from this collection. OK. Um, I partly wanted to show you this because we're so used to explaining things algebraically. And, um, and of course, one could do this algebraically. But I think it's the diagrammatic proof is rather more beautiful than the algebraic one. Um, and I suspect many of the adults in this room will have do, leapt to doing things algebraically and perhaps just not known that there are things that, that, that we can work diagrammatically.